Hey guys, uh, Drift here. Um, I know I haven't been making uh, videos for a while now, but uh, I'm finally going to try and upload another video. Um, back then my internet was pretty shitty. Uh, had a lot of issues with it. Wasn't able to upload videos um, very well. Always had errors and stuff like that, so I, I basically stopped for a long time. But if you guys are watching this, then uh, I was... That means I was able to successfully upload a video. So, anyways, today's video is going to be about my Tokyo Marui VSR10 project. Um, I got this from Aerosoft Gear again. Uh, I got this for about three hundred and forty dollars uh, in Canada. That's actually a really good price for a Tokyo Marui. As you can see, I've all I've already made some uh, changes to the gun externally. I've also purchased all of the uh, ex internal upgrade parts for the gun as well. Um, but right now it's completely stock. Uh, they're pretty much everything internally is stock Marui. Um, I did have to cut down the spring that's inside the uh, pop-up chamber because it was uh, way too strong and it wasn't allowing the BBs to feed, which was actually quite surprising since this is a Tokyo Marui stuff like that really shouldn't happen but it did unfortunately so but managed to get that fixed and uh, now it functions um, perfectly so first I'm gonna go over the uh, uh, externals of the gun um, the rail you see on the gun right now is actually a Avalon Mars rail um, I know it's used in the military and also with uh, pol uh, police units as as well as other uh, government agencies, I don't know which ones, but uh, you know, I saw on the internet, it looked really cool, uh, so I picked it up. It was a little difficult to find. You can still get these uh, from Airsoft GI, but they are already discontinued. So if you are looking for a cool-looking rail for your VSR or your Bar 10, I believe that fits that as well. Actually, um, I think that's the uh, JG clone. Of the VSR, um, it also fits uh, the APS APS2 systems. Um, you can get it for about sixty to dollars on ASGI, I think. I don't quite remember the exact price, but uh, it's really nice. Uh, people were wondering um, if the rail would clear the G-spec outer barrel because. Uh, the uh, standard VSR-10 actually has a uh, tapered barrel, which means it's a little bit thinner as it moves further out from the gun. Whereas the uh, the VSR-10 G-Spec has a straight barrel, is cons the, the diameter is consistent throughout. And uh, people were afraid that this would uh, uh, inhibit the installation of the, uh, the rail system. But, as you can see, it fits perfectly. It also looks really cool with the suppressor. The suppressor came with the uh, Marui G-Spec. Uh, uh, it screws on, I believe, uh, if I can get this to, to turn. I'm just going to put the camera down just one second. Let you guys take a look. So it screws off counterclockwise. As you can see though, it does have the Marui trades on there, and it actually works pretty well as a suppressor. I really don't mind the trades, um, because the suppressor makes the gun look a lot more uh, cool, of course. It's also, uh, I guess you could call it functional, in a way. Um, I'll let you guys hear what it sounds like. I'm going to place the camera right where the muzzle is, so you guys can hear what it sounds like. The gun is already clear, there's nothing inside, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so I'm just going to cock the gun. So that's what it sounds like without the suppressor. Now I'm going to reinstall the suppressor. Screws on clockwise. Just like that. Tighten it. You're good. I'm going to move this back. Here you go. As you can see, it makes a huge difference. 
Very, very cool. The reason why I haven't upgraded the gun yet, though, is because uh, I've been told by more experienced players, and I mean experienced, these players have been playing for over 10 years, and they told me to uh, actually shoot the gun in its stock form first to see how I like it, because uh, Maruri guns always shoot very consistent out of the box, and try it out before I upgrade it. That also helps me truly appreciate how well the gun will shoot after the upgrades. So uh, that's also something I look forward to. Um, moving on though, this is a King Arms scope, I believe. Um, I think it's it doesn't have a name. Um, I think it's the M1 scope. Um, it you it it is made by a company in China, but uh. They do make it for, uh, they are the OEM manufacturers, I think, for King Arms and for all the other China scopes. And it's actually pretty good. It's got, um, it's got the red and green uh, LEDs or lights inside the, uh, inside the scope. It illuminates the crosshairs, which look, actually looks pretty, pretty cool. Hope you guys can see that. Maybe I can move the camera down. There you go, just take this off as so you can see, get a better view of that. So that's red as you can see, and then you get green, and then it's off. So I usually use red, because um, I like red. The green I use sometimes at night, the red is better in daylight, uh, but uh, but the green does take it does reduce the battery, uh, the battery life, um, and uh, the red is a little bit more, I guess you could say economical. Not as much doesn't drain the battery as much or as fast as the green light. Um, of course, this is a really shitty. This is a really shitty scope cover. Um, eventually, I'll be replacing it, but at the moment, it will do. Um, the other thing I have on here is just a D-Boys, I believe it's a clone of the Harris Bipod. Um, not too sure. But uh, even with all of these upgrades on the gun... Oops. Shouldn't manhandle the barrel like that. The gun is still pretty light, it's not heavy. You can definitely carry this around for a long time. The plastic is pretty high quality. The stock is hollow, so you're gonna get that, you know, it's not in any way flimsy, it's really solid. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, it is ABS plastic though, so eventually when you, uh, you know, handle this a lot more, it's gonna get shiny. Um, but of course, I'm gonna be spray painting this as well. So, we'll see ha what happens. But um, in terms of upgrades that I bought, they're all Lalax upgrades. I got the Teflon cylinder. I got the um, the zero trigger by Lalax, as well as the piston. It comes with the trigger. Um, also got the Lalax uh, damper cylinder head, um, spring guide, and M130 and M170 spring. I'm still deciding which one I want to get. I'm going to be messing around with the springs as well as BB weights a little bit to see what kind of setup or what kind of combination gets me the best performance because um, for sniper rifles you do want to shoot heavier rounds um, but depending on the spring and the FPS you have you'll get different consistencies with your BBs um, you really have to play around with it a lot um, to really understand and know which combination works best with your gun it's going to be different every time so that's the only finicky thing about uh, sniper rifles. They take a while uh, to, I guess you could call it, optimize for your performance or for the performance that you want. I also bought the uh, Danger Works uh, Type A and Type B hop up arm. Depending on what rubber I'm going to use, right now I have an A, so I'm going to be using the two pronged one, not the flat surface one. 
uh, because originally the A plus is a flat hop, I believe. So if you're using something like a W hole with two nubs or two contact points, then you'll want to use the flat uh, hop up arm. Um, I've test fired this uh, a couple rounds, um, and I do notice that the BBs tend to curve. I believe it's curving right. I forgot now. I haven't. Uh, been airsofting for a while now because of school, but um, I believe it was curving right. That's an issue that occurs with pretty much all VSR 10s because of the design of the hop up arm. The reason for the curving is that the hop up arm is plastic, and when you adjust the hop up, the tension from the hop up causes the arm to bend, and that's what causes the BB to. Uh, to curve right near the end because it has an uneven contact point with the BB. Um, to fix that you have to get like a metal plate and put it inside the pop-up unit to prevent it from, from flexing and that fixes the issue. So I have to get that made first. Um, definitely the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to upgrade the cylinder first with the FPS once I get all the, uh, um, once I get the FPS to shoot consistent, then I'll work on the, uh, the hop-up unit. So that's basically what I'm going to do. Um, I also do have a Lalax 6.03 inner barrel. The reason for the 6.03 is because the 6.03 has much better consistency and accuracy. Some people may think that the 6.01 actually has better accuracy, but it actually isn't. The 6.01 barrels, they do have an accuracy increase compared to the stock barrels, but uh, the main purpose for 6.01 is to get the maximum FPS out of your gun because of the smaller diameter and the tighter tolerances in relation with the BB and the inner barrel. It allows the maximum amount of air to you know, push the BB out. Whereas the 6.03, which is slightly larger than uh, BB, BBs are usually like 5.95, 5.98 millimeters. Um, that allows air to move past, some air to move past the BB as well. And that prevents the BB from hitting the insides of the inner barrel. So it shoots more consistent and more accurate. So that's why I went with the 6.03. The only problem with that is it's the inner barrel extends past the suppressor. And I'll have to find a way to jerry rig or just make my own uh, barrel spacer for the inner barrel because you don't want any vibration through it, right? That would also affect accuracy. Um, that would also render my suppressor useless, so that's kind of disappointing. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the project. Uh, we'll have to do more testing uh, to see what kind of setup uh, I would like to do with this gun. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, PM me or leave a comment down below or you can message me on airsoftsniperforums.com. I actually have an account there. I believe it is Drift117. So you guys can check that out as well. I will be posting updates and stuff like that on my blog, so be sure to check that out. And also, I do have a Facebook page, but I haven't been updating it regularly. So... Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys later.